Right, my friends, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a fresh episode of our F1 uh, Manager 22 series with uh, Aston Martin. Uh, last episode's linked above. It's not to be missed. Honestly, it's amazing. I'm sure you're kind of looking at this and thinking, there's five points on the Drivers' uh, Championship. Yes, that's why you need to go and see the last episode. But um, yeah, we're going to crack on today. We're going to do a bit of team management as we always do. I'm going to apologise from the beginning of this uh, video. My voice might sound a little strange. I've had a bit of a sore throat and a bit of a sniffly nose and stuff i am getting over it but uh yeah it's hit me hard gang uh the family have not been well and it's kind of hit me as well so apologies if i do sound a little strange on the microphone today um let's go through all of our news items and whatnot um, so yeah, post-race overview, the board were watching this weekend, wanted to congratulate you on exceeding expectations, that's the first time that has happened, and the medium cornering and the break-in are still the two things that they think need developing, um, we are at the moment, uh, we've got current, cur uh, some current projects going on, we're researching side pods, um, that's kind of in cohesion with the regulation change next year, and uh, the underfloor is something that we are working on at the moment we've got 43 days left of that i don't think we can actually do anything more while this is going on uh we can manufacture parts but other than that we 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 can't do anything so we've got four of those four of those six of those uh, yeah we don't really need to be manufacturing anything so uh that's not really something we do need to do what i have got to do though is I need to look at the power unit. So the engines, we, we're probably going to have to change our engines out for the Spanish Grand Prix. I'm pretty sure we're going to be hit with a penalty as a result uh, in this race, but we really don't have any choice. The uh, As you can see, the engine's very much at the end of its uh, lifespan. They definitely went to about the 40% mark. So yeah, we're going to have to we're going to have to install a new engine on car one. And I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised if we have to do the same on car two. And we're going to have to do that as well. So, yeah, we're going to take those two new engines for this race. Um, ERS system is at 67%. So I'm actually all right with the ERS. And the gearbox should be, I was going to say, should be pretty good. Because we... Um, we only changed it out last time. We will just check this. Uh, they're exactly the same, which is nice. Is that the same car I'm looking at? No, it was a different car. So, yeah, we're actually a-okay -O -O -A uh, in all those departments. We have 35 million in the bank, so we're actually going to take a quick look at some operational facilities stuff. We are doing the hospitality area to basically get this to all two stars. Um, the team attractiveness, the race performance gain, uh, sponsorship target, payout. I'm trying to look at some that are not going to up our kind of monthly... Uh, uh, expenses too much basically so that's not going to go up a lot but it's going to take us up a percent in our sponsor targets payout which will actually make us more money i think i'm going to do that it's not going to cost a lot of money at the end of the day i think this um this operational facilities is going to be the thing that we'll max out first and then we'll really work on uh, the car development facilities these are very very expensive they're like tens of millions at a time so if i was to go here look eight million pounds basically we're doing the wind uh, tunnel at the moment um, our monthly upkeep for the wind tunnel is going to be huge once we get it. But I think that obviously you use the wind tunnel for testing and whatnot. Um, so yeah, and again, look, look, so much money, which is why I'm kind of leaving that stuff at the minute and just getting this stuff done. Scout in department. We would gain a scout, and I actually think this might be helpful because we are running a little low on our driver contracts, and I am scouting staff and drivers and all sorts basically at the moment so i do think it would help we've got one scout who's out active at the moment he's basically scouting someone so that i can get a better um a better feel for how much to offer uh a member of staff basically because we're basically trying to look for a new technical chief um the aerodynamics i think we are a bit um we're locked down, basically. We will just do that. And I think a lot of it is his contract because the cost to break the contract is 2.6 million, which is a lot of money, isn't it, to break the contract? But we are definitely going to need to find someone. Um, and, uh, yeah, we we have been scouting people. One thing I'm going to say, I might be acting dumb, but where do these people go? 
when we scout them. You know, where where do, where 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 does all of their um? So we're obviously scouting this guy because we were hoping to get a feel for how much we should be offering, uh, basically someone. Uh, and I can't remember who it is now, uh, for the life of me. Um, he was a free agent. Oh, it's this guy because we scouted this guy and he's open to negotiations. And uh, we obviously found out what he was capable of. But when I was offering the contract, I didn't know how much to offer him. And there was no kind of information. So that's why I'm scouting the other guy. I want to find out what sort of contract he's on. And then we'll go from there, basically. So once we find out, because they're very similar in rating. So that's kind of my thinking be behind that. Head of aerodynamics. I guess we maybe should scout some people for this. Um, 74 would be an increase. And he's only... Seven, he's only he's only 39 years old so we can't scout at the moment we obviously have two scouts out and about doing stuff i think we might be scouting some i think we might be scouting drivers might be what we're doing um because uh when i was looking at the drivers lance stroll only has a year on his contract so i think that's what i've been doing is uh scouting some other drivers, basically. Um, I'm pretty sure that Vettel's the same, but I feel like Vettel, if he's not going to retire, then I think I would rather offer him a new deal. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. So, yeah, I'm scouting Pierre Gasly at the moment because, um, yeah, I wouldn't mind Pierre Gasly at the team. Right, so we are getting ready, I think, for race weekend now. Um, we've just done the helipad. That's great to see. Spanish Grand Prix um, is what we're going to be doing. Uh, right, here we go. So he's a 79 and he's on 2.73 million a year. Right, I feel like we are in a better position to offer that bloke a salary. Wow, 7.6 million. Holy cow. I'd have to see what my drivers are on. What are my drivers on? Let's have a look at their contracts, shall we? So 2.9 and Vettel is on 14 million. Oh my God. So much money. So much money. He's only got seven months remaining on his contract. I don't know who I'm going to... Wow, that's a lot of dough. I didn't realise that his contract was that big, but... Fair enough. He is a former world champion. We should keep that in mind. Um, so, uh, it was a technical chief. I've already scouted him. This guy here. So, I know, I feel like I know the sort of figure we should be heading towards now then. About 2.7, around about the 2.7 million mark is where I think we should maybe go to. And see if that works i've got to offer it for two seasons yes he's happy a contract decline though why is the contract being declined he seems happy with both things it might be the seasons does he only want one season We'll do that again. Oh no, that's gone down. He wants more. He wants more than that. So okay. So how about we do three seasons? See if that works. He's very patient in his negotiations. Okay, and that's it. Oh, uh, his contract accepted. Lovely, lovely, lovely. We are going to hire him straight off the bat because he's just so much better than what we've already got. Uh, it's one point three to break that contract, but I think it's going to be worth it. So let's do that. And we have a new technical chief, T. Shong, in charge at the team. Very nice to see. And that's going to help us immensely with his performance ratings um, and our development of the team, basically. So I'm very, very happy to have him as part of the team. Uh, we will obviously be looking at aerodynamics. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm now looking at that and thinking that break of contract, 2.6 million, 
after this race, we'll see how much money we've kind of made, and I think it might be worth it. We, we've got a lot of money at this team, and I think getting this where it needs to be would be very wise. So our performance targets, I'm actually going to leave it all as it is. I'm not going to mess around with it this time around, gang. Um, I don't see what's going to happen here with the Spanish Grand Prix. I don't know if we're going to have a similar weekend to last time. I'm going to say probably not, but anyway, let's get into it. Formula One has cranked up the heat over Barcelona. The first Grand Prix held here was won by Nigel Mansell after a wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle with Ayrton Senna. But who will follow in his footsteps this weekend? Long straights and medium speed turns dominate here, but there's something else to watch out for at Barcelona. The air currents are strong and unpredictable, and they'll be giving aerodynamic components a real run for their money this weekend. We might still be early in the season, but that doesn't mean we can sit back and relax. Everything is up for grabs, and nothing is certain at this stage. What will happen this weekend? Only time will tell. So as always, practice. I'm going to go do it. Practice, practice, practice. Uh, I'm going to go do that and then we'll come back for qualifying. So practice three is over. Um, as you can see, I've got Vettel to a car setup of 71, but Stroll, we're only at 56. I don't know why Stroll just did not have the pace and I really struggled with it. But um, uh, yeah, we're going to have to edit to qualify and I think we're going to have to tweak He's set up even more. Here we go, gang. It's time for qualifying. Um, I'm going to send Stroll out very, very quickly. Um, my reason for this is I've had to tweak his setup a bit more. Um, I feel like I might have got it a bit closer to where Vettel is now, to be honest with you. Um, do you know what? My brother plays this game, and we talk about it all the time because he's just so addicted to it, bless his heart. And um, I keep like saying to him, you know, you got any tips on this and that and blah, blah, blah. And he's practice runs. He gets his car optimal. Like, it's, it's unbelievable. He gets it in the 90-odd percent. And I'm over here, and I'm, I think the best I've got it so far is like 80-odd percent. I don't know if it's a first season thing or if it's a, a learning curve thing um, with the game. But it is incredible what, what he's managing to do. So, yeah, we're going to stick with um, Stroll for that first flying lap. As you all know, for qualifying, I like that first lap. I like to sit in the car and... Um, experience it basically with the drivers on uh, normal speed i know it makes the episodes maybe a little long but um i think it's worth it i think it's uh it gives you guys a good view of what's uh, going on uh, with the car and whatnot so this is lance stroll's lap and we are off and going we in practice it was um 17th and 18th kind of back to where we're expected to be to be honest with you gang i think last race i think we all need to accept that rain in qualify really really helped our race weekend and uh i think the yellow flag helped as well we went on to a bit of an extreme strategy where we stopped once went onto the hard tire see them through to the end of the race and managed to gain points for both drivers i think we are going to be very much back to a very difficult race and um i'm very much accepting that um this time around and uh, i think that uh, one of the big things i need to accept is just essentially the car needs to be developed um i am wondering though how long is it gonna take to get this car to a point where it could be competing is this going to be a real long game are we talking two or three seasons or are we talking five six seven seasons it would be interesting to see because you know based on playing the game the seasons gonna are going to be long. They're going to be really long um, to get done. The races in themselves take me a while. So, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's a case of really having to like churn out the hours on the game. But uh, Large Stroll is going to come through and he is going to set a 120.385. We're going to jump over to Vettel because he is obviously on a flying lap as well. And we'll see where he is in comparison to lance stroll at the moment and then we'll see some of the other cars obviously come through and see where we are in comparison to those guys as vettel really rides the uh the corner there he's going to come round this final so where is he going to be in relation he is going to be just a touch two hundredths quicker than that of lance stroll and we are now going to see La Joe goes through in a 119 i think that's going to tell you all you need to know we're going to be one of the slower cars on the grid but uh anyway let's uh let's race through qualifying 
um, and see where we're kind of at. Albon goes a lot slower than us. That's good to see because obviously we are very much in competition with the Williams and uh, we're trying to catch the Haas. I think the Haas are the next car kind of that we should be catching. And if we're looking at the Haas, they have gone a minute quicker basically than uh, that of uh, Joe. Um, so yeah, um, they're about a second quicker than us at the moment which is uh, interesting to see, basically. But we're going to see all these uh, cars kind of set a lap, and then I don't know if it's going to be worth going out for a, another lap, to be honest with you. Uh, obviously, the racetrack is going to evolve as time goes on, so there is that. We should probably reconfigure the cars, just in case we do make that uh, decision to do so. Um, we're... It's everybody. Not everybody's set a lap yet, which is interesting, isn't it? Um, I'm going to send Lance Stroll out now. Um, there are cars that have gone slower than us. And I'm actually going to send Vettel out as well. No, I'm going to set another lap. Let's just see. Because Vettel at the moment is going through to Q2. So, um, yeah, let's see, shall we? There's going to be a lot of traffic on the racetrack, but I think Vettel has just about beat it as he goes out for his quick lap. So let's see what Vettel can do. I think there might be a problem with Vettel. Did he have a, did he have a bit of a spin or something? There is an issue there. Um, Stroll has not gone quicker. Let's hope Vettel doesn't get in the way here. The checkered flag is now out. Checkered flag is out. Vettel at the moment is hoping and relying on Alonso and Schumacher not improving and he will be through to Q2. I personally can't see that happening. I think Alonso is in a very, very quick car in the Alpine. As we've just seen, as he goes P8, and so yeah, we do drop in. But that's not a bad effort from Vettel. We are in very much a slower car. As you can see, he is going to start P16. So other than the qualifying last time, I believe that's his best qualifying to date. So that just proves that with a little bit of luck, we can do a bit better than 17th and 18th. It's not amazing, but it is an improvement. Welcome to race day. And before we get down to it, last minute checks are being made. Aston Martin did a good job during qualifying and they're pretty much where everyone expected them to be on the grid. Now, it's up to them to defy expectations during the race itself. Alpha Tauri's qualifying results were in line with the targets set out for the team. They certainly have the potential to achieve a good result here today. We've been having sunny weather here today, but there are some clouds looming that might complicate things for teams further down the line. And there are going to be some tough calls to make in Catalonia today. So let's see who makes the best ones for the Spanish Grand Prix. Right, so it is time for race day and it's time to get these cars kind of set up. Uh, so let's take a look at what we're going to do. So it's looking like a two stop for everybody. Um, I'm wondering, because we're at the back of the grid, do we just run long? We go with that hard tyre onto the medium and then finish on that soft tyre. Um, I would imagine a lot of the front runners are going to go soft, medium, soft. Um, but I really don't know what to do. Does that hard tyre really take us much longer than the medium? I guess that's what we should really check, to be honest. Um, it's going to take us to about lap 30. Whereas if we were to run the medium, it's going to take us to about lap 24. So you would get potentially another couple of laps. Um, I think... What I might do, I might just run them on different strats. The last two races, I've run them on very much the same strategy. I might go with different strats. I might go medium, medium with Vettel. He's the faster of the two drivers anyway. And I think I might go hard, medium, soft. Or Stroll. Um, I think that might be the smartest way to do it. 85% confidence in that car. So even he, I, I managed to tweak that to a point where I got it even better than Vettel's. Um... So yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. It's not going to show me uh, a lot of the stuff there. Uh, but Vettel's is still a pretty good setup though, as you can see. So I'm not too worried about it. Why it's not showing me the results for Strolls, I don't know. But anyway, it's not a problem. Driver options. We are obviously going to hammer this at the beginning, as we always do. 
um, for probably the first couple of laps and then we'll settle into the race. Uh, so let's get to it. Quite a few clouds overhead as we look at the lineup on the grid. And there's Sebastian Vettel. Slower than most yesterday, so today they'll be starting from the bottom half of the grid. There's Lance Stroll, down the grid. They're starting in the bottom half of the grid today, so there's a lot of cars between them and the podium. The teams are ready to go. This is it. It's the Spanish Grand Prix. And, it's and here we go, out. gang. Here and we go. We go. Um, Going to take a quick look at what everybody's doing tyres. So, Stroll and Sonoda are the only ones on the hard tyre by the looks of things. Everybody else has gone softs on mediums. So, it kind of lets you know where we are at in these early stages as we run down into turn one. And I think Stroll has overtaken Vettel. So, there you go. The driver I've gone on the faster <laughs> strategy was nearly overtaken then by the slower car. But, um, yeah, this is going to be an interesting race. Um, Good job, keep pushing. We're going to have to see what we can do, basically, uh, during the course of this one. Um, the Haas is a faster car. We do have one of those behind us, uh, sandwiched between the two Williams. Um, but, yeah, we're going to have to basically see what's going on as we do attack the McLaren. And that's a, a, a good move there from Vettel. Whether or not he's going to get that job done, I don't know, as he then runs a little wide. But uh, he had a look, though. He had a look. He's confident in that car at the moment. He really does seem to be very, very confident in the car. And, uh, yeah, we're basically just going to see where this goes. We'll stay with this sort of pace for the first few laps. I like to see how it settles in as he gets a really good drive out of that final corner. And I think he might get the McLaren. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Come on, you've got to make this stick, Vettel. You've got to make it stick. And I think he is going to make it stick. That is a beautiful pass from Vettel. Uh, the veteran up to 15th and that's really really good driving from the German um, absolutely loving that right so he is flying at the minute I think a lot of this is because I am pushing the tires very early on in this race just trying to get a little something extra out of them uh, in the early stages the McLaren seems to be going backwards which is uh, which is insane so let's uh, put both the these on neutral enabled. now the just enabled. settle in a little bit DRS has been enabled. And Vettel's going to have a go again. Vettel is very confident in that car at the minute, which is really good to see. Um, I'm enjoying what he's doing in this Aston Martin at the moment. Was very good in the last race. Obviously, qualifying helped him a great deal. Um, but yeah, he's enjoying it. He's enjoying it at the minute. And that's what we want to see, basically. So... Uh, yeah, this is a long old race, this one's 66 laps. So I'm just going to stick with this until we really kind of settle in on those tyres. I like to push them, as you all have all seen, I like to push them the first few laps. And then we kind of settle in and see where the car really is at. But Vettel's pace seems very good at the moment. It really does, it seems very, very nice. He's kind of being dragged along by that train of cars there though, isn't he? Um, especially now the DRS is active. It's kind of that DRS train and he's very much on the back of it, so... Looks like Aston good to Martin. see. Stroll has overtaken Ricardo as well. So that, that McLaren is struggling at the moment. It really is. Um, this train of cars, though, has kind of pulled in the cars that were behind Vettel uh, in a little bit. A lock up on the track? So uh, there is that to kind of worry about a little. But um, I think there's a lot to be said about slower cars... Uh, sorry, faster cars dragging slower cars along. And I think that's very much what's uh, what's happening here at the moment um, in this race. The Stroll is pulling away a fair amount from uh, Danny Rick at the minute. But uh, we're going to go on to that standard setup. We're on neutral, and that's kind of how I'm going to play it for this race for now. And we're going to speed this up a little bit now, gang, as we do kind of settle into the race. And we're just going to kind of keep an eye on the times. Wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, drivers start to catch each other up. Danny Rick's tyres start to bed in a little bit. What is the tyre that he's on? So, Ricardo's on the medium. So, that hard tyre was, you know, a bit quicker, to be fair. Pulling out a bit of a gap. Uh, they are two Vettel now. 
No surprise there. And there you go. Look, Ricardo back in front of Stroll. And he'll probably catch Vettel up and get back in front of Vettel. And we won't be surprised by it. That's just kind of where we are. We're, that's where we're at at the moment. That There, there we go. It's because we pushed the tyres early. Um, I think that helps a lot. He's pushing the tyres early. Uh, Vettel overtakes Ricardo again. And then has pulled out a bit of a gap. Um... But yeah, this is kind of our true race pace now. The early stages of the race, I feel like we always hang on to the coattails of the cars in front because of the way we push the tyres. But you just legitimately can't push them basically that strong throughout you know, the race. Our first pit window is going to be around 20, lap 24, and around about lap 30 for Lance Stroll. So essentially, that's where we're trying to get the cars there's not, not really much interest when we're at this part of the we're in this part of the racetrack not like last race when it was really on the line for us points um this race it's very much a case of you know see what we can do isn't it as uh, danny rick takes that place back McLaren, gain a position. and uh, we've got schumacher all over the back of lance stroll and i think these four cars at the minute are going to kind of drag each other along as long as they remain in each other's drs which Vettel is managing to do with Ricardo. Um, that's kind of how it's going to go for, for, for a while. Um, we do have some uh, excess fuel there, so we will push. We will push uh, Vettel a little bit for a while, just to kind of burn a bit of that off. See if we can open up a little bit of uh, a, a gap. We'll just settle that back in. And. But Ricardo's overtaking him again, no real surprise. They're going to go for tip for tap, basically. It's that DRS. Those four cars are very much sticking together as a result of being in each other's DRS. And there's a mini DRS train there, the same as there is from 9th to 14th, there's a DRS train. So I think that's kind of how it's going to, how it's going to go for the remainder of the race. Um, we're at lap 20, so our pit window is going to be opening very soon for Vettel. Um... That, our, our small pack of cars is 10 seconds behind the next pack of cars. Uh, I think it's going to be all about getting these pits right. Uh, as you can see, our pit window is open. So we do need to keep an eye on that. There you go. Vettel takes Ricardo again. And a lot of that again is this DRS train. This mini DRS train that we've got in these bunch of four cars. And uh, yeah, it's going, it's going all right, isn't it? Now... 65% on the tyres. We're going to come in in a couple of laps. I'm actually going to push this. I'm actually going to push these tyres a bit. Because I feel like we can. Because we're com literally coming in in the next couple of laps. So let's push the tyres. You are joking. <laughs> He's not happy with that overtake, is he? Anyway, let's push these tyres a bit. A car run wide. Schumacher run wide. So that's going to help stroll out a little bit, isn't it? So there we go. Vettel's going to take that place he's up to 13th because of a few pit stops that are happening but uh yeah essentially he gained two off. positions there we go that's nice driving from Vettel yeah we're going to push this for one more lap and then we are going to come in I think there we go pushing the tyres has helped it's kept us in front it has kept us in front so yeah we're going to go one more lap and then it'll be time to pit um vettel basically so yeah we can we've looked after the tires nicely that we can kind of put the hammer down a bit for a couple of laps but really judged it a bit better we might have been able to go a bit quicker than that so we are going on to another set of mediums oh my god i've got this so wrong because all the mediums we have are not great so we're not going on to mediums. We're probably going to have to change strat and go on to a hard tyre. We obviously use the mediums in practice. I had not thought about this at all. Um, there's no way we can go soft, soft. So yeah, we're going we're gonna to have to go on to the hard tyre ourselves. We are. Uh, it conflicts with the strategy, but that's basically what we're going to have to do. And box, 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 box. Hadn't really thought that through, had I? There's just some stuff I forget about, I don't keep an eye on. And that's one of them, where I've obviously missed a bit of a trick there. Um, but yeah. 
So Lance Stroll is going to be coming in in about, what is that, five laps time. I'm going to get Lance Stroll to about lap 26, and I might, I might push his tyres a bit, actually. So Vettel is in. He is really going to drop down. One of those things, though. And what we are going to do, it should be on. Yeah, we're going to push, basically. We're going to push that as well. We are going to now go a bit more aggressive on these hard tyres. Looks like there's been a lockup. Um... Or Lance Stroll and see what he can do for a few laps. Going to kind of manage this as well for Vettel in the early stages. So Vettel now on the hard. Oh no, 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 no. What is going on here? Why is it? He's changed his strategy to a point where, like, we won't get another pit window. We're not going to be able to take this hard to the end of the race. So we're going to have to... If we work this out, they've got about 30 laps in them, right? So if we can get him to lap... Get, if we can get Vettel to about lap 55, and then we can throw the soft tyre on. I need to keep an eye on that. A lot of this is my fault, because I didn't look at the bloody tyres that we had available to us. I'm absolutely burning the fuel like an idiot as well because I've not kept an eye on that. Um. But yeah, let's just jump back into it with this. Uh. Like oh, up. stroll run. Let's, let's actually see if he did run wide because I've seen this it's many times stroll. in this game where it says, "Oh, they run wide. They barely went yes, wide." The oh, he up. did go wide. He, he really did. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a big blow to the team. Yeah, Lance Stroll's not had a good time of it there, is he? Anyway, let's continue this on a bit. As uh, Vettel continues to push. Yeah, Alonso's taken uh, over Stroll. No real surprises there after that. Run wide from the driver. Um, yeah, this is going to be like, this is back to normal running. Oh, did someone run wide Ocon then? runs wide now. Might help Vettel a little bit. Try and catch him. Um, Stroll's doing all right. He's actually got so much fuel. Let's push, 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 push. Let's try and try and drain some of this fuel because that's going to make that car very, very heavy. Uh, yes. So we've got that fresh set of mediums we can go on. So let's just take a look at this, actually. So he's coming in the mediums we can actually check where he's going to come in and they're probably going to be coming in around about a similar time now as a result of my mistake on Vettel's box, box. Oh. Vettel's uh, strat so okay, yeah, that's one of those things so yeah Stroll's going to be coming in soon um, Vettel's going along quite nicely we're going to have to settle in we will go back to balance so I don't forget that when it comes to his pit stop Yeah, we'll take a look at Stroll in a moment and where he's... Uh, he went to lap 32 in the end, so not bad from Lance Stroll. Really did do all right on those tyres. Uh, so, he is coming in around about lap 52-ish. Yeah, okay, so that's good to know. Uh, yeah, we'll see where Vettel's at with these tyres, though, when uh, as and when that time comes. And we'll play it by ear. But yeah, we're kind of in that part of the race now where we're settling into it Vettel's running 16th Stroll running 18th kind of where I expected our drivers to be um, there's been a severe crash so this could help there could be a yellow flag here could uh, bunch the uh, pack back up a little bit I wonder if they're going to show us the uh, no, DRS. no DRS as well so uh, Safety car. not going to worry about pit stops I don't think car we need to wall. Don't we literally just gone on to new tyres? So I've uh, got to conserve the tyres. No overtaking permitted. So yeah, we are going to conserve the tyres during the safety car. So who was it? Joe and Norris. Are we going to see the crash? They're going to let us see the crash. Is it not? 
not giving us a replay. It would have, would have been nice to see it, but two cars out. So there was me saying a couple of uh, races ago, oh, we never see anybody go out, do we? It's uh, not very realistic, blah, blah, blah. And since then, I've uh, seen a couple of cars go out in a couple of races. So, yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, so, yeah, this is just a case of catching up the safety car at the minute, isn't it? All got a bunch up before the safety car's going to come in. Let's uh, speed this up until we can get all the cars around the racetrack. A lot of this is because I'm trying to conserve those tyres. I'm trying not to burn them out too much. But we are going to get there eventually. It's taking a while, isn't it? Taking a long while. And more to catch that safety car. Uh, we are pretty much there. Safety, safety car, car will be, will be in lap. this lap. So when it rounds that corner, around about that corner, we're going to put... Vettel <laughs> did not manage to catch the pack up. Well, that's interesting. So let's just do this at two times speed. I want to get it to a certain point before I really put the hammer down for both cars. They're going to have an immense amount of fuel to burn off, which will maybe help a little bit. I'm going to go aggressive for both drivers for a little while. We just need to push now. Actually, I'm going to go attack those tyres. I'm going to push these. I'm going to push that. Do right, so let's go. We? Let's see what we can yeah, do, okay. shall we? Lots of cars getting out of the way. And I think Schumacher managed to take one of the drivers there. It is what it is, though. But yeah, we've got a bit of fuel to burn off. Just going to go aggressive for a bit because I want to try and get some power in these tyres. Um, and yeah, let's just go racing and see what happens, basically. But uh, yeah, we'll just... We're going to have to ease off a bit on the tyres. I've got to get them a long way into this race, haven't I? Um, these I've got to get to lap the odd. So we will ease off in a bit. Lots of fuel to burn off, though, at the moment. So a bit of an extra mixture will probably help for a little while. Uh, yeah, Lance Stroll is up the back of Michael Schumacher, so, uh, sorry, Mick Schumacher. I keep saying Michael Schumacher. It's because I have the legend in my head whenever I see the name Schumacher. That's just how it is, gang. Anyway, let's ease that off a little. And, uh, yeah, we're going to get back into kind of settling into this race, I guess, and um, just seeing what happens. All the cars are bunched up, very much bunched up again. DRS is enabled. And DRS is now enabled. Well, that's good to know. Especially down this straight, because there's going to be a bit of a DRS train and it's going to kind of keep everybody close to yeah, to some extent for a while. But uh, we will see that gap open up between us and the Alpine. It's a much faster race vehicle than ours. Um, we are currently running P14 with Vettel. Schumacher with the DRS though can't quite get us still burning off a bit of this fuel and uh, yeah well 1.2 seconds already 2.2 seconds over Vettel and I think it's only a matter of time before Schumacher really overtakes overtakes us um Let's go a bit more balance there. You've got much more that you can kind of burn off at the minute. Interesting. Very, very interesting, this race. I don't really know what our true speed is at the minute. I really don't. We're so much faster than the Williams, though. Like, they're not... They just can't get close to us, can they? Um... We have so much fuel in abundance at the minute. I think a lot of this is just because it's so bunched. This is almost suggesting that we are a whole lap ahead of Schumacher. I'm not sure if that's the case. Did somebody spin out there? Magnussen's spinning. Let's take a closer Let's have a little look at what's oh, happened with him. Kevin Magnuson here. Oh, he, did he get and touched? Yes, that's 
that's where they split. Hmm, that's interesting. Did you get touched there? So Lance Stroll's pit window is still a good seven odd laps away. So might have to pit Vettel first because of those race tyres. Oh, it's tough. All because I changed the strategy. I think I have to change the strategy officially rather than just changing the tyre. See, it's just a learning curve, isn't it, at the end of the day. Um, Vettel's up to 13th as a result of Magnussen's spin. But there you go. Vettel going along quite nicely again. There's another yellow flag in sector three. Someone spin again. Is that a lock up? Uh, Latifi lock up. I'm not going to look at a lock up. There's really not much point in that, is there? Um, but yeah, we're kind of mooching along all right in this race. I think um, Vettel's up to 10th because of the pit window now. Yeah, the, the, we're very we're a whole lap ahead of Stroll because, uh, as you can see, we've gone through and they haven't gained positions. So that's wow, that's interesting. Vettel was so far ahead of those guys. Um, the safety car may have something to do with that, but uh, yeah, Vettel's going along all right at the moment. Quite enjoying the work that both my drivers have done in this race. I know Stroll's a bit behind, but running fifteenth. So 15, he's running 15th and he's 15 seconds ahead of uh, Albon. Metal is running P8 at the moment. <laughs> wow. Fair enough, Vettel, fair enough. But obviously, we have got a pit still yet with him. So, yeah, let's... Uh, I generally might just take these tyres as far as I can take them and we'll go from there. Um, why is this... Oh, right, pit window is open for Lance Stroll. Um, Vettel, maybe you should just let Stroll pass, mate, because he's behind us and it would kind of help him. You know? Just let him pass. Do him the world of good. Oh, can I ease that? No. Is there a thing where I can... Is there an option where I can just let him go by? No, clearly not. Anyway, that would probably help Stroll, do you know what I mean? Um, as he is a whole lap behind. But, uh, yeah, let's uh, actually attack these tyres then for a bit. Because he's in his pit window. So he's probably going to come in in a couple of laps time. Um, so, yeah, let's just see what we can do. Running along okay, aren't we, in this race? It's not really been as action-packed as the last race. And uh, there's no real surprise there, gang, to be honest with you. There really isn't. Um, I think this is kind of what we were expecting. Um from the race. Oh, Vettel. Going along quite nicely at the minute, is Vettel. So, yep, yeah, we are going to open those options up and we're going on to the soft tyre. And uh, so he is going to pit. Box, box. I'm going to now hammer these tyres for maybe a lap or two with Vettel. And then I'm going to, obviously, I'm going to have to manage his pit stops a bit differently. But basically, we're going to push him and push, push, push. Just get these tyres basically to where they start to fall away, which is around about the 50% mark. So, yeah. Vettel isn't going to finish this high up. Because uh, everyone's pretty close and he doesn't really have that gap to people. I think I might go around this grid one more time and then we will think about making those pit stops basically. So yeah, we'll just let you go out. So yeah, we'll go past that start finish line one more time. Alpha Tower, he gained a and race. this is where we are now going to make our pit stop for Vettel. Um, uh, so yeah, let's see what Vettel can do basically on this on this lap he'll come in and uh, then we'll go from there basically but yeah he's gonna probably he's probably gonna come out on track around about 14th I would imagine based on looking at everything cars going by Danny Rick 
14, 15, yeah, he's going to come out 14th on the racetrack. And about just under a second behind Magnussen. So we'll keep it pushed for a bit. And uh, it will settle in now. We have uh, nine laps to go. The soft tyre really does go off a lot quicker than the others. So we have to keep that in our minds. But we'll see where that tyre is with a few laps to go. And then we might be able to push towards the end. He has overtaken Magnus. So we will look at this overtake. Because I've kind of done a lot of this race, haven't I, in the, in the map view. But that's good driving from Vettel. Really good driving to gain a position. Obviously using the DRS up that pit straight. Um, and we'll see where he can go from there. He is obviously pushing the tyres. A bit of extra fuel mixture at the minute. There's an abundance of fuel in both of these cars. I think a lot of that was the safety car. And uh, here we're just going to basically see where we can keep these uh, cars. If we can keep them ahead of those Haas drivers. Obviously, we're very much a whole lap ahead. So, the bare minimum, I think Vettel can finish. This, uh, this um, race is around about... Um, 14th, basically. I'm going to just settle those tyres in for a few laps. Basically going to see where they are with a few laps to go, and then I might push them again. Is uh, the way I want to play this. I'm going to deploy a bit more extra ERS for Vettel to try and fight off uh, Magnussen on this st uh, start straight. There we go. I've worked that quite nicely. We're going to drop that back into neutral. Oh, big lock up there. Uh, Snowder with a lock up. Right, where are we at? Where are we at? Right, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to deploy that on that start straight. See if that helps at all. I think it did. I'm going to go back to neutral. Really manage, managing it. Right, I am going to go a bit more aggressive. There's four laps to go. I'm actually going to go aggressive, not full on bloody take it Seems to the to house. Magnuson's locked up. That might help us a bit. Yeah, pulled out a bit of a gap. And... The Stappen is kind of dragging us along. <laughs> the the uh, race leader. Uh, Vettel going quite nicely. So I'm going to go a bit more aggressive with yours as well. Lance Stroll is uh, running 16th, he's quite a ways behind Schumacher now, 7 seconds behind. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of just keeping an eye on this and running the tyres as and when I see fit and using the ERS. Uh, with three and a half seconds behind Ricardo, bit unfortunate really, you know, but um, that is what it is. But it's not been the worst race, it really hasn't. I really thought this was just going to be back into where we were. I think the safety car definitely helped us. Uh, we had to change the strategy with Vettel. I don't know if that's helped us in the long run because we managed to run that hard tyre quite a way, didn't we? So we are into the last lap now. Um, I think we might as well attack the tyres. We might as well deploy your DRS. Your ERS, I mean. And... Uh, yeah, just kind of go from there. We probably are a whole lap behind Verstappen, to be fair, because we are up his backside. So he's on his last lap, but we're technically not. We've still got a lap to go after this one. Verstappen's kind of helped Vettel, though. Kind of helped drag him along, hasn't he? So, yeah, we'll probably go past that, that there, and we'll still have a lap to go. Which we will see in a moment. Vettel will take, uh, sorry, Verstappen will take the chequered flag, but Vettel will still have another laps to go. Oh, Vettel's taken the chequered flag. Okay, fair enough. It's done and dusted. It's a 13th place finish for Vettel. I actually think that's not bad. Just for, just a couple of places outside of the points positions. He's had a pretty good race. He's had a pretty good race. And I think Lance Stroll's done not too bad as well to finish P16. Um, he had the better set up overall but didn't really have the race pace that Vettel did. Right gang so the race is done we finished P13 of P16 and a, and a positions uh, multiple positions gained for both drivers which is really really good to see uh, one for Stroll three for um, Sebastian Vettel drivers it puts Vettel 14th Lance Stroll remains in 
15th and the Constructors, we remain in 8th ahead of the Haas and the Williams who are still yet to pick up a point. Really, really important that is going forward. Um, a bit of XP gained for both drivers, as you can see. His development is going up a lot more than Vettel's who actually gained a development point. Right, gang, we are done and dusted for today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed that one. A lot more... Uh, gained from that race than I thought we were going to get, to be honest with you. Um, not as exciting as last time, but still baby, baby steps and baby improvements. Minor improvements each time. Next round is Monaco, the legendary street circuit of Monaco, and I am absolutely buzzing for that one, so be sure to join me. We'll do all of our um, admin and whatnot at the beginning of the next episode. Be sure to join me for that. If you're new around here, enjoying the series, enjoying the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Show some appreciation by leaving your comments and liking this video. But until next time, stay safe, stay humble, and I will see you real, real soon.